Hi, everybody. Welcome to second segment, episode 214 of Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. I'm Weston Pew, and today we thought let's educate our friends and family and buyers and sellers and talk about you know what trigger leads are before it is too late. So tell us what trigger leads are. So I think let's like as you said, let's talk about what they are from a bigger standpoint. So trigger leads are when you apply for something and you get unsolicited. And I think that the first time that we've really started seeing this was um, when people at the closing table would be, the escrow agents would say, we're not gonna sell your information, but when it gets recorded inside of the, the county, there are groups that are in there that are combing that information, so window blinds and everything is going to be like mailed to you. Yeah, so it basically turns the consumer into a lead based on some activity they do. But, like it's a closing, applying for loan. Correct. I mean, it's, I, there, there are probably trigger leads that are created when you get a new phone now. And I think that we're all kind of accustomed to them because, you know, algorithms are a form of a trigger lead. The True. way that they see that you search on Google for something and then yep. all of a sudden it appears in your social media lines. But these are a little bit different because they're annoying and they come in so fast. So these are, uh, as Weston was saying, what the one we're talking about this time is when you go in to do or go in, I say you don't even have to go in. When you mm -hmm. apply for a mortgage, when the lender pulls your credit from one of the, the three credit bureaus or all three credit bureaus, that creates a trigger action, which the credit bureau is now going to sell the fact that you just applied for a loan to all the, not all, but any other lender out there that they're that is willing to pay for it yep alex barker was telling us um, in an email update that he had been to a conference for it was the realty allegiance conference and so one of the speakers got up and spoke and to demonstrate this had his credit pulled while he was talking in front of all of the all of the audience members and by the end of the day i think they said he had 27 um, unsolicited contacts from brokers and by the end of the week or Thursday he had 127 unsolicited contacts that is excessive yeah. it's it's crazy it's uh, it's a it is almost like going to lendingtree.com and applying because all lendingtree is doing is they're selling that lead to 20 or 30 other lenders out there so yeah. but the thing is with lendingtree you probably know that you're going to be the one that's getting all that activity coming in because you're kind of requesting it in a way. Right. But when you're doing one mortgage or one mortgage uh, application, that's a lot. You know, and this is when we contacted Jeremy um, Radcliffe with SWBC and we said, wow, you know, this is coming to us from two different angles. You know, what are you guys doing about this? And he said that their default now is to not include um, the borrower's uh, email or phone number so that it shields them from this bombardment. Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, and there, all of that data is just out there so much. So I don't doubt that you're probably still going to get those calls, right. even if your lender decides not to do that, but it'll certainly cut down on them. A hundred percent. You're absolutely right. You, it's not fail proof, but that would be definitely one of the considerations um, is that with a lender that that information not be submitted, mm -hmm. and then if they're not willing to do that, maybe it would be behoove you to slow down, call around, um, because that it, it's going to happen to as many people are on the application. And this is all legal. The, yeah. the, the credit bureaus are able to do this through the Fair Credit Reporting Act. The uh, Federal Trade Commission feels like it gives a consumer an opportunity to have many other opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, you know, lots of other input. I don't like the part that no one tells the consumer that that's right. going to happen because that that's what freaks everybody out. One of the at the top of the show we talked about how we had come this had come to us from several different sources and we thought that might be a good reason to make this a segment segment. But the National Association of Mortgage Brokers, also known as NAMB, um, announced that its agenda for 2023 was to continue to advocate for the Trigger Leads Prohibition Act, um, which protects consumers and their data. And that'll be really interesting to see if that actually happens because I feel like this is going to be trigger leads for across the board, not just in mortgage, that they're really fighting for. Yeah, I, I would I would bet that that's, we're gonna start seeing it in, in, in many industries where there's 
one central repository for information. Uh, it is, which is so wild right now how big the world is, but how smaller I think it feels like it gets every day. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any other questions about trigger leads, reach out to us. We'd be happy to let you know what we know. Uh, if you have any other topics you'd like for us to discuss, just add those down in the comments below. We'll be happy to make that happen. And just remember, we're going to be your realtors for life. When you're ready to talk real estate, you can reach us online, by phone, or by text at 214-377-2223. And remember, we want to be your realtors for life.